talking to the newsmakers every day. The conversation continues with Evan Solomon. We are going to take a break from covering the war for two segments. First, we're going to meet a guy, a 77-year-old grandfather from British Columbia. Get this. He's going to join us at the end of the show because you need something to inspire you. Who spent, he was basically lost at sea on a raft. And he spent five days basically eating nachos. Five days lost at sea. Crackers. Amazing story. You're going to meet him. Trust me, you don't want to miss that. But, you know, in, the, in all the talk about Ukraine, many people have said, hey, we're not talking about COVID. But there's an extraordinary case and a bloody controversial case that just happened about a divorce couple who were disputing about whether or not their, 12, their three kids, 14, 12, and 10, should have to get vaccinated. The mother said no. The father said yes. But the judge cited a well-known doctor who is known to be a discredited anti-vaxxer, which lent the case new and kind of fascinating elements to it. So Kevin Caspers, uh, senior associate lawyer at Shulman and Partners, has been following this, and Kevin joins me now. Can you tell people what this case is all about, Kevin? Well, I, I think this case really, um, I mean, this is this is a case that, sort of deviates and, and and takes a turn from what we've seen historically as it, as it relates to vaccinations uh, in, in uh, the question of vaccination in the court and a judicial notice that it's a, it's a positive thing. And I, I think this case really stands for the premise that each case um, has to be taken on its own and the circumstances that that particular case presents. And uh, I think that's exactly what Justice Pazarax, uh, who was the judge in this case, did, and uh, hence his decision. Okay, just, just just walk us through the case. So tell me about this. This is a, this is a Hamilton family court judge who you just referenced. Uh, talk about the mother and the father. What was the dispute here? Walk us through it, Kevin. Sure. So, uh, I mean, I think it's important to note that in this case, Justice Pazarax uh, acknowledges that both parents are excellent parents. So we don't have a history, um, for example, of, you know, one of the parents perhaps not having the children's best interest in mind or you know, being neglectful or something to that or having, you know, an unreasonable position. We, we don't have that in this case. Um, and he, he acknowledges that. Uh, so from going from that, he then assesses the evidence that the various that each party put forward to support their position, whether it be, um, you know, the father uh, is seeking the children to be vaccinated or the mother who was opposed to it. And I think what really he decides is neither of the evidence or the or the information that primarily it seems was provided um, by the parties that they downloaded from the internet that it was accessible to them was really helpful in making in making a decision he says you know the father puts forth these government uh, you know um, uh, websites and, and information saying that uh, children being vaccinated is, is a good thing and we encourage it it's it's effective and it's safe and then the mother puts forth, you know, various um, uh, things she's found on the Internet. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Dr. Robert Malone. That was one of the, the sources that she put forward. Um, he's very controversial, as you mentioned. That's correct. And so she puts for, she put information forward to the opposite, suggesting there's concerns, there's side effects. She even provided the um, fact sheet from Pfizer, who, of course, is the, a manufacturer of one of the va- uh, vaccines for, for COVID-19. So I think Justice Pazaret says, you know, uh, I, I can take judicial notice, certainly, of certain things, but I don't think the information here is helpful to me um, on either side. However, he does note that the mother's information is more thought provoking, he says, more, um, you know, uh, helpful to her position than simply the government uh, releases that the father has uh, provided. And so ultimately, he says, you know, the mother has a history of being a, a good parent. Uh, she's, she's provided some information. It, it's not it's not determined. Right. It's 
it's not determinative for, for, for my decision, but it's certainly more helpful than what the father has provided. And uh, I think what's really a strong uh, position um, to assist the mother is that the children themselves are expressing an opinion that they do not want to be vaccinated. And that's an opinion that right. um, has does, shows no sign of influence by the mother. It's, it's They're mature enough to express their own opinion, just as Pazaretz takes notice of that, and there's no indication that the mother has, you know, influenced them to express that opinion. And I think that's that's probably the, the, the most the most powerful um, the, uh, factor in, in Justice Pazaretz ultimately making that decision. So, so Kevin Caspers, uh, S- associate lawyer at uh, Shulman Part- and Partners, what's the significance of this? So the kids don't have to be vaccinated. You got a judge basically using as as trustworthy evidence Dr. Robert Malone. Anti-vaxxers love to quote this guy. Uh, he's been widely debunked by the medical establishment, although he's got significant credentials. I understand that he's a real. You know, people say, "Oh, I saw that guy in the Joe Rogan podcast." So this is where he gets his notoriety from. Uh, but what is the significance of this case in terms of the vaccine debate? I mean, I think I, before I do, I do answer that, I think it's important to note that it's not that Justice Pazaretz relies on this, let's call him a controversial uh, medical source, Dr. Robert Malone. I think he just says that Dr. Malone's um, position and his articles, he clearly has established credentials. He's a doctor. He's very, he's, he has a history of being involved in the, the development of the, of the, uh, mRNA vaccine, but it's more thought provoking than what the father has provided. And he's saying he's not ta- he's, he's not deciding which side is correct, vaccination or not vaccination. That's not the that's not appropriate for this case. And furthermore, the decision that he's making is not a dis- blanket decision that now says, well, I think children should not be vaccinated or Uh, children, you know, that's not what he's saying. He's just saying in this particular case, and his threshold is best interest of the children, I believe that it's in the best interest of the the children, and given their opinions, that they not be vaccinated. So I think what we're going to take from this, and and what's going to happen, is that it's going to force the courts, it's going to force judges, it's going to force litigants to really consider their specific circumstances when they if they choose and when they go to court over the issue of vaccination, it's going to be it's going to be yeah. determined on a case by case basis. That that's it. Now, like this, all of a sudden means that if you want, if you know, in these legal disputes about vaccination, these family disputes, it's a much more complicated argument than might, people might think. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, I think I think you're absolutely right. It's no longer a, a, a um, idea that hey, everybody vaccination is good for everyone, regardless of your circumstances. No, that's not, that's absolutely not what um, this case stands for. It's, it stands for, um, okay, what are the circumstances? What are the, you know, of the parents, of the family, of the children? And what are their, what are their preferences? And then taking all those things into account and then making a determination. It's not simply, um, we simply can't say that, you know, vaccination is good for everyone under right. every and that's really what Justice Pazarat's decision stands for. It, it is a remarkable moment when people think, you know, oh, you're not vaccinating your parents, uh, your kids. Is that an act of negligence? That would be one people think, oh, you're just negligence. But uh, this is a whole different ball game now. As you say, there's a lot more factors. Uh, Kevin Casper's uh, senior associate lawyer at Shulman and Partners. Thank you, Kevin. Really fascinating case. We've got to keep covering it. I appreciate it. Thank you.